Thank you. Oh, God bless you, Restore Church. Wow, some of us need to get our spare rooms ready. Some of us need to be ready. Some of us need to be shifting our mindset to good old-fashioned Christian hospitality where people come and live with us, where our homes are open to whoever the Lord would send to come and live in our home with us because people are going to get saved in this generation. They're not going to have anywhere to live and they're going to need spiritual parents. So we need to get our spare rooms ready. I mean that literally. I mean literally. Think about the room in your house and would, would it be a place where a young born-again Christian could flourish and be nurtured could you be a spiritual parent to someone? Would you be willing to have someone living with you with all their mess and all their chaos and help them to become all that God created them to be? We need to get our spare rooms ready. Hospitality. Hospi- good old-fashioned hospitality like the early church were taught to practice hospitality. So when, um, when Ian sent an email to Rich and I about someone coming to speak here on Pentecost Sunday. Rich and I said we'd pray about it. And as soon as I, as soon as I turned my mind to think about it, a question came straight into my mind. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? When Jesus asks a question, he does it to bring us to our own point of understanding. Obviously, he already knows the answer. But when a question is asked, it gives you an opportunity to think about what you understand. So what are you doing here? This question can bring our own personal revelation. It's a simple question, but it has deep and profound and incredible implications if we can answer it. If we can really take a moment to think, what am I doing here? This question could refine us. If we really know what we're doing here, we can afford to let some things go. Some things that have come into our life that are crowding out the real purpose of our lives. If we really know what we're doing here, we can let some things stay and we can recognise that God has brought this into my life for this season. And we can pay attention to those things and tend to those things. And if we really know what we're doing here, we can push into new things to come because the Holy Spirit is always birthing new things. So restore church, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Well, I've been doing a bit of research to find out what you're doing here. And I'm going to tell you a story. Maybe some of you have heard this before. Maybe some of you have heard bits of it before, but I've been researching into what Restore is doing here. What is it doing here? What are you doing here? I've managed to spend some time with Mary. Who is Mary? Oh yeah, I managed to spend some time with Mary and she was able to shed some light on what you're doing here. So 1984, 40 years ago, So you would have been 20, (laughs) 20 years old. One of those young men who needed spiritual parents, yeah. So 1984, 40 years ago, there were a group of young people and they were meeting in the Brethren Church in Loughton. They went away together to Spring Harvest, which was a place where you would go on holiday as a Christian And there was teaching and worship. And those young people who went to Spring Harvest got filled with the Holy Spirit, baptised in the Holy Spirit. And to put this in context, the Brethren Church teach that that's not for today. That kind of manifestation of the Holy Spirit ceased when the apostles passed away. And for today, people aren't filled with the Holy Spirit. So that was a bit of a problem. When these young people arrived back from spring harvest, full of the Holy Spirit, back to the Brethren Church, it was difficult. They were filled and on fire, and they didn't want to divide the church. So two men and five women, Mary being one of them, and those young people, they began to meet in someone's living room for worship and for fellowship and for really good hospitality that was the beginning 
That was the seed from which this has grown. And that group soon outgrew that living room. So they began to rent Lincoln Hall on Loughton High Road. And after a while of these people meeting together, people wanted to start tithing, bringing their offerings, bringing their finances to the group. So they needed a bank account. And when you open a bank account, you need to have a name. So they needed a name. So they began to pray and ask God what they should be called. And they came up with Vineyard Christian Fellowship. That was how Vineyard Christian Fellowship started. And there were two prophetic words that Mary shared with me that at that time were taken really seriously. One of them was Vineyard started off with two men and five women. And in the prophetic word, it was compared to Jesus blessing and breaking the five loaves and the two fish. Those five loaves and two fish multiplied in amazing ways as Jesus broke them. And that was the prophetic word that came that encouraged them that from this beginning, there was going to be multiplication, great multiplication. The other prophetic word, Maureen Want, a lady who got this picture, she saw an area that was covered lightly with snow. And there were sheep scrabbling around and they were trying to get sustenance from the grass beneath. And there was a large cross shape that had been dug out in the snow and it created, the cross shape created four separate areas. And in these four separate areas, the sheep were able to feed in this space. So as they interpreted that prophetic word, they felt that there were four key and significant areas to be identified as a church where they would pour out their attention. So one of them was children, children, young children. The second one was worship. So this is what the Lord was saying to the church, the church in its inception in those early days, to pay attention to children, to pay attention to worship, and Mary can't remember the other two. <laughs> so, when we met together, we were having a good guess at what they could have been. But I would really encourage you to dig a bit deeper around that and ask the Lord, because I feel like that has such great significance. If the Lord wants us to pay attention to something as a church, then we ought to pay attention to it. So children worship and two, we can fill in the gaps. So with regards to the worship, about paying attention to the worship, they began to pray and fast for a worship leader. And Mary said it felt like a miracle when Wes and Mary Sutton arrived at the church. For those of you that know Wes and Mary Sutton, who were instrumental as part of the history of this church. So they arrived, this is around 1986 now, and Tony Wakelin, who was one of the men at the time, asked Wes to preach a sermon the week after they arrived. And his first sermon that he preached at Vineyard Christian Fellowship was based on um, Jesus' words, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So that was Wes's first sermon. So since those beginnings of Restore Community Church, they... They, from Lincoln Hall, they broke into two congregations, one meeting in Rodin Valley School, and that was led by Simon Clinton, and one led in Willingow School on the Broadway, and that was led by Mary Sutton. And I'm presuming that the Kings must have arrived at some point around here. 2001. 2001. Okay, so fast forward to 2001. The Lord sent the Kings to be part of this great church. And then over your history, you've met in Davenant, you've had the Restore Centre on the Broadway. This is just some of the things that I could think of when I was thinking about it. The South African Church joining and partnering, Doxadeo, Enfield, Camfield, yeah. Cranfield, Canfield, yeah. Trinity Church, Oakwood. So all these things that God's done over the span of 40 years. And when you think about that word about multiplication, two men and five women, and the multiplication, when you really think about it, if we were to lo lodge the history of what's happened over the years and the lives that have been touched and impact, and I'm sure that there are people that you've sent to the nations to minister, I'm sure people have come through here and received healing, salvation, baptisms that would have gone taken place here. The Lord has 
been faithful to his word that was prophesied for multiplication. Meanwhile, 1982, over in Thaden Boys, Thaden Bois, there was a young couple. So this is 1982, so two years before 1984. A young couple, they were youth leaders at Thaden Boys Baptist Church. So this young couple, Mike and Lynn, they went away to what was called the Dow's Bible Weeks. Any of you know what they are? And at the Dow's Bible Weeks, Mike and Lynn were completely overwhelmed by the worship and they came home to Thaden Boys Baptist Church, baptised and filled with the Holy Spirit. And the, that, the Baptist Church at Thaden Boys weren't too sure about that. They weren't too sure about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and what was happening to this couple. And this couple did not want to rock the boat. But they were the youth leaders. So soon after they'd experienced an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their own life, they were praying for young, one young man in the boiler room of the Baptist church, not wanting to rock the boat. And he was baptised in the Holy Spirit. And the move of the Holy Spirit began to spread through the young people that they were working with. And in, interestingly enough, that young man who was baptised in the Spirit in the boiler room of the Baptist Church now leads worship at St Mary's. It's Martin Huff, for any of you that know him. And after Martin Huff was baptised in the Holy Spirit, out of him began to pour the most incredible worship songs. He used to write songs to worship. And he still does. And when you, when you sing some of Martin's songs, the words, the, the way that the Lord used him, as this couple saw what was happening around them, they felt that God was prompting them to leave the Baptist church. And reluctantly they did, not having any idea where they were going to go next. So they met in their garden to have communion. And on the first Sunday where they met in their garden to have the communion, there was a knock on the door and it was one of the young people from the youth group who they weren't trying to attract or encourage to leave the Baptist church. But this young girl knocked on the door and said, what are you doing? And they said, we're having communion in the garden. And she said, can I join you? And within time, there were 90 people in Mike and Lynn's living room <laughs> as without trying to, they planted a church without meaning to, by accident, the Holy Spirit planted a church through them. So as they outgrew their living room, they began to realise they needed somewhere to worship and to meet together. So they rented the village hall in Thaden Boys and Thaden Boys Christian Fellowship was born. Thaden Boys Christian Fellowship went on to purchase Grosvenor Hall in Debden, by some miraculous intervention of the Church of England, it was a Church of England building and they had a congregation there called St Gabriel's, the Church of England sold St Gabriel's, built the building, Grosvenor Hall, to Epping Forest Community Church for £40,000 and there was a covenant on the land of that hall that it had to be used for the spiritual good of the community. So... Thaden Boys Christian Fellowship became Epping Forest Community Church and here we are still now today meeting in Grosvenor Hall. So I'd like to ask the same question, what are we doing there? What are we doing here? And there were prophetic words that were spoken to Mike and Lynn and the others that joined them to plant the church that they also took seriously. One of the prophetic words that came was, I, from the Lord, I will be worshipped. And they felt that deep sense from the very beginning that the, the Lord was planting the church because he desired worship from his people. There was a word that came to the church that it would be significant in helping people who were suffering with addiction that lived in Debden, that it would play a significant role in the lives of those whose lives had been wrecked by addiction. That was a prophetic word that came from a man called John Barr, if any of you know him. The other, th the, th the three things that the church felt, so Mary said about four things that they felt God was asking them to, co to really focus on. Three things that throughout the years have been impressed on Epping Forest Community Church, a community, children and resource, meaning, the, the word resource meaning that people will come into the church, be resourced, nurtured, loved and sent out as a resource 
to the nations. So that flow of people coming in and people going out, a resource church. So they were some of the prophetic words that were taken seriously by those people at the time. And I think this is incredible. The Holy Spirit birthed our churches. Isn't it incredible, the parallels of what God was doing in, that, in those days, in the early 80s? The Holy Spirit was birthing something in this area. And it is actually been such an honour to partner with you in the gospel and to, to work with you in what God has done. And when I, when I think back over the years of all the things that we actually together have done as a church, I think about kids clubs and youth groups, many, many summers on a wet field in Taunton, Somerset, with all the young people of Loughton, taking them away to Soul Survivor, churches together in Loughton, Living Free, Jessel Green, Inside Out, so many things that we together have partnered. And I know I speak on behalf of all the leadership and all the people of Epping Forest Community Church when I say we, we love Restore Community Church. We feel honoured and privileged to work with you as a team for the kingdom, for Jesus. I love the fact that there's no sense of competition no, no sense of your church and our church. It's the church and we're serving the kingdom and serving Jesus. The Holy Spirit has birthed our churches for purpose. So what are we doing here? It's an important question to ask. It's a simple question, but we can take it seriously and allow it to refine us. We can allow it to refine us. We can allow that simple question to enable us to let things go. Because if there are things that we're doing that God hasn't asked us to do, we can let them go. And we can let things stay and we can nurture things, things that God has birthed, things that the Holy Spirit has brought into being. If they're of God, we can nurture them and pay attention to them and take them seriously. And we can push into new things that are to come. When we have a sense of what we're doing here, we can allow the Lord to let us push into new things. We can be aligned. And that's my prayer for us, for you, for Epping Forest Community Church, that we would be aligned to the purpose that the Holy Spirit has for us today. And in, in the prayer meeting this morning, uh, Malcolm had a word about train tracks and us being on train tracks and not even having one wheel coming off of the train track, but being completely aligned to the purpose of God. And I believe that is what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to align us to his purposes. He birthed our churches and he has plans for us. We're here for a purpose. So I asked Mary and Mike and Lynn to summarise their reflections of what happened in the early 80s. Now that they've got the benefit of hindsight, they can look back over the experiences that he had. Mary said, I suppose it was all to do with the Holy Spirit. Lynn said, it was what God did. Our only part was to be obedient. It was all God. And Mike said, it was really exciting. It started right from the beginning with the Holy Spirit leading us. We met, we tried to hear God, and we tried to go from there. And if anything good happened, it was because God did it. Over the years, this is Mike still speaking, over the years, we've made mistakes. We have had our own bright ideas and our own bright ideas have come to nothing. If the Holy Spirit doesn't say it, then don't do it. And don't let man control the church. Let the Holy Spirit control the church. We can complicate things. We can go off track. What does God want? What are we doing here? It's time for us. It's always time for us. But I feel significantly, as you celebrate your 40th birthday, it's time to look again at what God has said through the prophetic and to ask God, are we aligned to what you're saying to us today, Holy Spirit? What needs to go? What needs to stay? And what new things do we need to push into? I find it such a comfort myself for Epping Forest Community Church when I think about us as a church. I find it such a comfort to know that the Holy Spirit birthed our church because it makes me feel that we have a purpose. Until the Holy Spirit decides it's no longer for the church to exist, we run with the Holy Spirit filling us and empowering us 
and aligning us to God's purposes, the breath of the Holy Spirit flowing through us. Life comes from the Holy Spirit. Fire comes from the Holy Spirit. New birth comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit birthed our church and still today we want that. It's the cry of our hearts and I know it's the cry of your hearts. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit with your fire. Come Holy Spirit with your life. Birth new things. Birth new things in us. As the Holy Spirit is at work within us as a church, we can bring life to our community. We can bring life to the children of our communities. We can bring life to the people who are suffering in addiction in our community. We can bring the life of the Holy Spirit as we stay connected with him and honour him always and acknowledge him always as the one who birthed our churches. And over the years, he allows human beings to come and take positions of leadership and those positions are important. It's important that churches are led well by stable people who know the Lord. But it's the Holy Spirit who leads Epping Forest Community Church. It's the Holy Spirit who leads Restore Community Church. May it always be so that the guiding and the leading of the Holy Spirit keeps us on track and keeps us focused. Thank you, Lord, for what you did in Debden. It's so amazing what you did in Loughton, Lord, what you did in Thaden Boys. Thank you that we're part of that, Lord God. We're part of what you did. We too have been birthed into this fellowship. And we thank you, Lord. And we honour those who went before us, Lord God. We honour Mary and Mike and Lynn and those people who stepped out in faith as you led them and as you prompted them. Thank you, Lord God, for the way that they paved before us, Lord God, for the walls that they pushed down and the barriers that they broke through and for their faithfulness and their obedience to you, Lord God, to plant what you were calling them to plant. We thank you for their humility, Lord God, their humility. I don't believe from the sense that I got from speaking to them that any of them knew what they were doing. None of them labelled themselves as apostles and church planters of the 80s. They were humble believers who followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. So let me ask the same question to you individually. What are you doing here? Let's just think about this now as our individual selves. What are you doing here? I believe that you have been birthed by the Holy Spirit in Ephesians 2.10, it says that we are God's masterpiece, created anew in Christ to do good things that he has prepared in advance for us to do. So what prophetic words have been spoken over your lives? If you've been birthed into a prophetic culture, I'm sure you would have heard the voice of God speaking to you about who you are and about what God has called you to do. I remember walking into Epping Forest Community Church for the first time ever, not really knowing what was going on. I'd only been a Christian for a week, but I walked into that prophetic culture where people were hearing from God and where people were sharing the word of God. And Lynn, the woman who was involved with birth in the church, she prayed for me. She'd never met me before and she said, I can see you surrounded by children. And it's the first prophetic word I, I ever received. And the Lord made that come the Lord brought that prophetic word to pass as I spent many years surrounded by children. That prophetic word had life to it and the life of that prophetic word was passed on to children as the Lord used me to work with children. So what prophetic words have come to you? What has the Lord said to you? And have they come to pass? Are they still coming to pass now? Or are they to come to pass? I want us to think about Peter for a moment, Jesus' disciple Peter. When Peter was called by the Lord, he was a fisherman. That's what he did for a living. And Jesus said to him, come and follow me and I will make you fisher, a fisher of men. That was the word that came to Peter. Come and follow me and I'll make you something completely different. And Peter did leave everything and follow Christ. And he spent years with Jesus, being trained, watching Jesus, learning from Jesus. Jesus sent him out to do what he'd seen Jesus doing. And he did become a fisher of men. But there's something very fascinating about Peter that I want to bring up today. And it's found in Luke 22, when they're having the Last Supper together, just before Jesus' crucifixion. And they're sitting together and in Luke 22, 31 and 32. Jesus says to Peter, 
Simon, Simon, calls him by his old name, the name that he had before Jesus called him Peter. He says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Sifted. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Everyone in that, when Jesus explained that picture, everyone would have been able to bring to mind what it looked like to sift wheat. That would have been a common practice. So wheat would have been sift, sifted through a giant sieve, shaken violently, so that dirt and other impurities that clung to the wheat would be separated from the wheat. It's a picture of something very unsettling. It's a picture of extreme testing. But the outcome of the sifting is refining because at the end of the sifting process, the wheat is ready to do what it needs to do. So what has shaken you? What has sifted you? I felt the Lord wanted to ask this question of you this morning. It's a very unsettling, violent process. What has shaken you and what has sifted you? Because although we're called of God and born again of the Holy Spirit, we have an adversary, the enemy, who comes to sift our faith, to prevent us from becoming all that God created us to be. And equally for Restore Community Church and for Epping Forest Community Church, what has sifted us, what has shaken us. I know that the pandemic had an incredible effect on the church in terms of sifting and shaking us. It was a very unsettling time. But through that process, I believe that the Lord can refine the church. We can come out of that process of sifting refined. And the same for us as people. When we go through a time of sifting, Jesus has prayed for us that our faith will not fail. So what has sifted you? What, have, what has shaken you? Have you experienced intense discouragement? Has tragedy come into your family or into your life, bringing trauma? Sometimes it's sin that we get involved with and entangled with that sifts us. Sometimes we get hurt by church. Sometimes the, 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 the church that we're a part of can have an effect on us that damages us and hurts us. Is that something that has sifted you? Have you experienced that? Sometimes we can get involved with the wrong relationships. We can align ourselves to the wrong people. We can have someone or a group of people in our lives and they are the wrong people. And through our connection with them and our alignment with them, it will sift us. And with, if we stay connected to that person or that group of people, our faith will fail. I feel that is a very strong prophetic word for someone. If you are in the wrong relationship with someone, your faith will fail. And you need such discernment and such strength to know that that relationship needs to break, it needs to end. And if you need help with that, if you need prayer to help you to end that relationship, then please do, if you know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, please do end that relationship. Because the Lord has called you for purpose. You are a masterpiece and you have been created anew in Christ Jesus to do good works that he's prepared in advance for you to do. And if in the wrong relationship, it will completely derail and shipwreck your faith. But take heart because Jesus has prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Unforgiveness and bitterness is something that can shift, sift our faith and shake us. If we have unforgiveness and bitterness towards God or towards a partner, towards someone who is close to us, it can end up having, a, having the effect on our faith where we'll be totally shaken. So I want to encourage us as a church this morning to step out of the sifting and the shaking season and step into the moment where we're refined for purpose.
and where the Lord brings, brings new life and new hope and new assignments to us. When we come out of the sifting, when we come out of the sieve, we're refined for purpose and the Lord is always doing something new. What are you here for? The Lord has purpose for you. The Lord has purpose for Restore Community Church. After Peter was shaken and sifted, when he denied Jesus three times, it must have felt for Peter like the end of the world after he did that to Jesus, completely denied any knowledge of Jesus whatsoever. But it wasn't the end for Peter. After he lost his courage, after his faith was shifted, sifted and shaken, Jesus reinstated him. Jesus reinstated him, gave him his purpose. And we see in Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, the day that we're remembering today, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And being filled with the Holy Spirit, the man who had previously denied all knowledge of Jesus, stepped forward in front of the crowd and preached a sermon that resulted in 3,000 people giving their lives to Christ and being saved and baptised. Peter was refined. Peter stepped forward as a refined disciple of Christ, ready to step into his calling and to become all that God created him to be. 3,000 people, 3, people were saved when Peter stepped forward. And I just picture that moment, and I would love to know, maybe one day we'll get to know, we can ask Peter, I don't know, but when the Holy Spirit came and filled them, and the crowds gathered around wondering what was going on. I wonder what it took for Peter to step forward. Just a bit of boldness to step forward, to step forward. How, do, how did we know it was Peter out of the 12 that was going to step forward and bring the sermon? Maybe one of the others wanted to do it, or maybe, the, maybe they were all petrified, but it was Peter who stepped forward and brought the word and brought the message. Well done to Peter. Well done to Peter for stepping forward. And stepping out of that place of being sifted, stepping out of that place of denying Christ and stepping forward and preaching the message that he preached on the day of, Con on the day of Pentecost. Well done to Mary and her friends for stepping forward in 1984 when the Lord was moving and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's always, it's always an opportunity to step forward. And Mary and her friends stepped forward and here we are sitting today because of their obedience, because they followed the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Well done to Mike and Lynn for stepping forward when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they knew that the Lord was calling, out, calling them out of what was familiar, calling them out of their old church into something new. They didn't know what was ahead. Well done to them for stepping forward because now today many of us are, are reaping the benefits of their obedience and what they did. We have a rich and healthy and wonderful church that we're part of thanks to them stepping forward as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Well done to all of you who have stepped forward when you've been filled with the Holy Spirit and you've stepped forward into ministry or you've stepped forward into what you feel God is calling you and asking you to do. Well done to you, those of you that have stepped forward, just like Peter stepped forward into his destiny to become the man that Jesus created him to be to become the fisher of men, to lead the church in Jerusalem, to lay down his life for his saviour. Well done to Peter for that, that act of stepping forward. So I want to ask you again, what are you doing here? 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 May the Holy Spirit stir refresh in you today the purpose for which he called you into the kingdom, the purpose for which you were born again. For some of us, we need to be realigned. We need to repent and let some things go. For some of us, we need to be recommissioned. We need to receive prophetic words again. We need to be reminded of the prophetic words that have been spoken over our lives and we need to let those things stay in our lives. We need to nurture them and we need to be reminded of what God said. Some of us need to hear God's voice again and some of us are fresh are going to hear from God today as he tells us new things that he wants us to push into, new things that he wants to birth. 